Okay, so here comes the next part of the, uh, I was gonna say video, but this is a completely new video. This is my top 30 favorite albums of the year. Uh, you can see I'm currently pumping gas on my, uh, my Rolls Royce. But uh, just a quick disclaimer that I always get before these videos. Of course, there's way, 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 way more albums that I did not listen to versus albums I did listen to. So chances are there's gonna be an album that you like that didn't make it on my list. But hey, um, make make your own list, you know? Do do your own thing, you'll live your own life. Um, here, I'm trying to do two things at once. It's usually a recipe for bad things to happen. But I'll go ahead and say, I normally like to do a disclaimer as well, where I talk about albums that would have made my list last year, uh, had I heard them the year they came out. I'm only going to do that for one album this year and that's for the song horses on route 66 by the garden uh truth be told if i would have heard that album when it came out that definitely would have been my album of the year even more so than the kendrick album that came out last year so that's uh horses on route 66 i saw the garden i'll try to get it again i saw the garden for the first time this year when uh they had that one cool festival one strange night in orange county uh, it was my first time ever seeing them, looked up their music afterwards and thought they were one of the coolest bands to ever walk the face of the earth. And I think that album is proof of that. So yeah, we'll talk more about my top 30 later. All right, here we go. So I just bought some flowers and hopefully I can deliver a few in a bit. You can see them back there. So, all right, top 30. At number 30, we have In Rainbow Roads by On Forward. Um, it was, they completely remade the album In Rainbows by Radiohead using only sounds from the Super Mario uh, 64 soundtrack, which even saying that out loud, oh my gosh, what, that's, <laughs> that's crazy. Number 29, we have After the Magic by Paranol. Number 28, I put Hell Mode by Jeff Rosenstock, great punk album. Number 29, Goodbye Hotel Arcada by Mary Lattimore, experimental harp player who did a great job on her newest album. And for number 26, I have Ignore Grief by the one and only Shushu. All right, see you guys in a bit. Okay, so made a few of those deliveries and now i'm gonna go out for a run go and see if i can get in five miles after this warm-up so beyond that we've got number 25 24 23 22 and 21 for number 25 i put the high by sampha for number 24 i put desire i want to turn into by caroline polachek for number 23 i put butcher's house by cemetery for number 22 i put no highs by tim hecker great ambient album and for number 21, I put the electronic album Return to Archive by Matmos. Shout out, shout out Matmos. All right, here we go. Okay, so I'm halfway through the run. We're two and a half miles in. So what a better time to talk about the spots that come in at number 20, 19, 18, 17, and 16. So at number 20, I have Isn't It Now by Animal Collective. Uh, one of the better records they put out in a while, in my opinion. Really happy with the way they performed on that one. Number 19, I have New Blue Sun by Andre 3000. And, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a great album. But who would have thought that, you know, Andre 3000's first solo album outside of Outkast would be some spiritual, new age, instrumental flute album of all things. I mean, that was uh, that was not on my music bingo card going into 2023, I'll say that. So that was number 19. At number 18, I have Natural Wonder Beauty Project by Natural Wonder Beauty Project. It's a collab between Anne Roxanne, Anna Roxanne and DJ Python. I thought they knocked it out the park on this album. Anna Roxanne usually has more of a devotional ambient uh, kind of aspect to a lot of her music, but she went for more of a vocal pop performance on this one, which was a huge surprise for me, and I thought she knocked it out of the park. This is my first introduction to DJ Python's production as well, and I thought they paired together paired together marvelously on this album. 
Up next at number 17, I have Joanna Sternberg with I've Got Me. Had no idea who she was before I listened to this album, but was totally blown away. Uh, probably the best, I don't know, well, maybe not the best, depending on what you think, uh, how you would classify the next couple albums I talk about, but easily one of, if not the best folk album to come out this year. Joanna Sternberg, I've Got Me. And then last but not least, at number 16, uh, pfft, might have to check back with you on this. Okay, so at number 16, I have the now dissolved underground band, uh, Anti-Material Worlds, with their album, Double Saturn's Last Purification Exercises. So not only is this a punk album, it's also an electronic album, but it's also a devotional album. Uh, the singer Guara, he's actually from uh, the ISKCON Hindu denomination. I was able to meet him at a show uh, last year for a lightning bolt concert and he introduced me to his faith and his music and honestly this album totally blew my mind uh, there's so many interesting and creative concepts going on here and again all with kind of this uh, religious and devotional edge that I don't think I've ever heard in a punk album before that was just super surprising and super avant-garde so number 16 anti-material worlds Double Saturn's Last Purification Exercises. Great album. Okay, so taking a little bit of a walk, uh, just let my heart rate come down after finishing my run. So let's carry on with the list with number 15, which if I'm not mistaken is Heavy Heavy by Young Fathers. Uh, first time I heard a full album by then, thought they did a great job, really cool album. Um, next up after that, we have the record by Boy Genius, oh my gosh, they killed it on that album. Good job, Lucy, good job, Phoebe, good job, Julian. Um, number 13, Lucky 13, we've got Javelin by Sufjan Stevens, beautiful, beautiful album. Number 12, we have Rat Saw God by Wednesday, super cool rock album with some great storytelling. Check it out if you haven't already. And beyond that, number 11, we're going to finish off the teens slash tens, with the exception of number 10, this is number 11. We've got What We Were When We Went For The Sea by Colin Stetson, uh, super awesome, amazing experimental jazz album. Colin Stetson's The Man. If you haven't checked him out already, what are you doing? You got to get on that. Colin Stetson, What We Were When We Went For The Sea. All right. I'm gonna go stretch. All right, so I'm done stretching, gonna get ready for dinner pretty soon. So let's go ahead and try to knock out some of these top 10s. At number 10, I have The Beggar by Swans. Um, super cool follow-up to Leaving Meaning, if you ask me. At number nine, I have Coin Coin Chapter Five by Matana Roberts. Really gave Colin Stetson a run for his money and came out with what I think was the best jazz album this year. That's Coin Coin Chapter Five by Matana Roberts. At number, what is this, number eight, we have Guts by Olivia Rodrigo. Super awesome sophomore album, uh, improved upon Sour and by every metric, in my opinion. Really enjoyed that album. Not a single bad track on that album. At number, so that was number eight with Olivia Rodrigo. At number seven, we have 93696 by Liturgy. I think the only metal album to make this list. Um, then again, I didn't listen to Panopticon this year, but regardless, at number seven, I have 93696 by Liturgy. Excellent, excellent metal album. And rounding off the first half of my top tens, I have Soft Scars by Yule at number six. Uh, kind of shoegazy, but still kind of maintaining true to some of those electronic roots that she established on her first album. Um, Yule just uh, continues to amaze me. Again, not a single dud on this album. Um, I really do think she pulled out all the stops and improved a lot upon her sound in this album. And that is why it's at my number six for the year. Okay, I'm hungry. I'm going to eat. Talk to you later. All right, so I'm gonna be my last stop of the day. I ate, I showered, and then I decided to come buy some actual groceries at an actual market rather than just buying a few things. Well, 
Let me take that back. Target's nice. I like Target. You can go to Target every once in a while to get some stuff, but I like coming to Stater Brothers to do most of my shopping, and that's where I am now. Uh, regardless, enough distractions. Let's get to my top five favorite songs of the year. No, wrong video. Top five albums. Gosh, it's been it's been a day. <laughs> Number five. We've got the JPEG Mafia Danny Brown collab album, STH. And, you know, so often when you have two all-stars collide at this level, I, I always walk away or, walk, excuse me, walk into it with the expectation that, you know what, they're good, but maybe they're good in their own right. Maybe that same energy won't be there in the presence of each other. Maybe they'll detract from each other rather than enhance from each other. But I was wrong on all fronts. This is an absolutely massive album, insane levels of creativity, insanely playful, super just off the walls, insane, loved it front to back. Okay, and at number four, we have Sprain with The Lamb as Effigy. And I mentioned this about their songs, um, their song, what was it? Man Proposes, God Disposes in my last video. But this whole album is just bleak, just to the fullest extent. There is nothing redeeming in terms of any positive emotions to be found on this album. And again, it's very uncomfortable at times, but that's kind of what attracts me to it. I'm, I'm really attracted to extreme forms of music and in terms of albums that hit those kind of emotional lows that you could find in some certain niches of post-rock, in this case, post-post-rock, they just hit it to a new extreme that I'd never seen before. And it, it makes me really sad that they're not a band anymore, unfortunately. Um, they had a couple albums leading up to this that I thought were really good. Definitely not on this level. This is a new peak for them, but if this is the end, then I mean, Hey, what, what a way to go out. Okay. And at number three for my top albums of the year, I'm going to put 10,000 Gex by 100 Gex. This is the album following their debut 1000 Gex. And like the name suggests, I firmly believe that this album is 10 times better than 1000 Gex. And that's saying something considering how insane that album is. 10,000 Gex is, I, you just got to hear it, right? It's one of those things that defies description. Yes, there are some genre tags thrown off like, oh, uh, you know, it's a little bit of ska. It's a little bit of electronic. They're still dabbling in hyper pop. But it all just collides in this boiling, fruity, zany soup that I, I had high expectations going into this, but it, it was nothing on this level. This was spectacular. Okay, and ooh, now we're getting to some big ones. I mean, these top five are all... I mean, at, at certain points, each of these top five could have been my number one at certain points of the year. But for number two, I'm going to put Saved by Reverend Kristen Michael Hader. And again, was super shocked by the switch up this time around. She, of course, released her last three or four albums under the name Lingua Ignota, which I, I love those albums. And I've talked about some of those albums really positively um, in some of these year end videos. But I think this album is just... I mean, you think you know an artist and then they released an album like Saved and just defy all expectations. We're talking elements of gospel, elements of folk, elements of bluegrass, elements of uh, classical and devotional, all melding. Uh, I don't, I don't want to say seamlessly because that's kind of the charm of this is that there's so many clashes in styles that... Uh, oddly enough, even though they clash, also enhance each other, which I know doesn't make sense when I say that out loud, but I promise you, if you listen to this album, there has never been an album like this album. It's so dark, but in some points, just deeply, deeply uplifting, um, kind of like a good sermon should be in a way and 
you know, you'd expect nothing less from the newly christened Reverend <laughs> Crystal Michael Hader, which leads me to the one and only number one album of the year. I have Weather Near Me, Food Tomorrow by Baby Baby Explores the Reasons Why That Gum Is Still on the Sidewalk. Now, I've been pulling for this band since I saw them live in 2019 and heard their debut safe self-titled project. So I was really anticipating this new album, but it just, I, I found something in this album that I don't think I've ever really acknowledged in another piece of music. And that's how encouraging it is. And what I mean by that is most music that I listen to, and I think a lot of people listen to, is in a lot of ways discouraging. Discouraging in the sense that it's so good and it's so enjoyable, you think that, wow, I could never make anything like that. And oh, there goes the light. And that's not to say this is bad. It's just this album is so profoundly messy and disheveled and just personable and charming in that sense. It doesn't try to be anything it's not. It's just three friends having what sounds like the time of their life and making some of the kookiest music you ever heard doing it, okay? And if they could come together as amateurish as what their sound and skill set is slash are and pull an album like this off that's so perfectly enjoyable, it really convinces me that, you know what, at some point, I, I'm going to make music. I can make music. If they can do it um, with all of their flair and pizzazz, then maybe I can too. And whether or not I actually do isn't necessarily the important part. It's the fact that it made me feel like I could that I really appreciate. And I can't really say that about another album uh, this year the same way that I could about Food Near Me, Weather Tomorrow this uh, that dropped this year. So that's it. That's my album of the year. Whew. We made it. I filmed this all in a day from pretty much the time I got up to the time it is now. You could already see the Asian buffet in the back. Uh, it's pretty dark now. But I'm going to get this edited. Hopefully I can get this released before the new year comes around. Uh, if you're still here and you're still watching, I, I love you. I'm so happy you made it through this year. Uh, keep your head up. You're doing great. 